Knock, knock, everybody. Derek Van Ness here, investor, wealth strategist, and life adventurer. And today we're going to be talking about the economy, specifically the real estate market, and why I don't think it's going to crash in 2021 and probably not in 2022. Now, a lot of people will argue with me. There's a million videos out there that are saying the market's going to crash, it's going to be terrible, but don't believe the hype. Real estate is not going to crash in the next couple of years. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly why. And as I get into this, let me just tell you how I see this and where I'm coming from. Listen, I've been a real estate investor. I started investing in real estate back in 2003, right? Over the course of those years, I've owned almost 200 properties over either flipping, rentals, owner financing, all kinds of different strategies, Airbnbs. I've done it all, right? And let me just tell you, why I don't think this is going to happen and what's so different. Because listen, 2006, 7, 5, 6, 7, things were going up just like they are right now. Uh, things were going crazy. People were buying houses. In many cases, houses they probably shouldn't ha have or houses they couldn't afford. Here's the difference. That's not happening right now. Yes, we're seeing houses go up. They're going crazy. But back in the last crash, we saw something that's historic. Other than like the Great Depression, real estate has never really taken the kind of hit that it took in 2008. That is not a normal part of the cycle. What happened in 2008 that's very different than now is a couple of things, right? The first one is in 2008, lending was so loose. We used to joke that they were, the, the lenders would go, oh, uh, yep, he's got a pulse, give him a loan. That's how lending was. They, there was stated income loans. If you haven't heard about those, you literally could tell them that you you made anything you wanted. In fact, I had a client call me when I was flipping houses and she said, hey, I really need to get rid of my house. I can't make the payment. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me what's going on. And she said, well, I bought this house and my payment's like 3,500 a month. And she's like, but I can't make that payment. I said, well, why not? And she said, well, I only make $4,000 a month. And I was kind of stunned. I was like, what? how did you qualify for this loan? And she said, well, when I was sitting with my loan broker, he told me that if, as long as I told them I made, I can't remember what the number was, $9,000 a month or something, that I could have the house. And I wanted the house. So I said, okay, I make $9,000 a month. The loan broker wrote that down, checked her credit. She got approved. That's the problem. Those kind of loans were happening. That is not happening right now. I'm not saying lending is super, super tight, but lenders are checking things. Lenders are making sure that debt to income is available. Back then they were doing 125% loans. Can you imagine being able to get a loan for $600,000 on your $500,000 house? They're not doing that right now. People were buying houses. I was living in Southern California at the time. People were buying houses in Las Vegas that were totally empty. And they were just buying them and letting them sit empty. They weren't renting them or anything just because the values were going up because one investor would buy one and, and that would push the value up. So the next guy would buy one. So it would go up and the next guy would buy one and they would go up and everybody saw the values going up like crazy. And I think a lot of people in California love the idea of having a second home in Vegas so you could go up and have fun and all of that. But the reality was those people weren't buying based on real needs. There wasn't a housing shortage. There was nobody to even rent these houses. There was no jobs in Vegas to fill a lot of those houses. It took many, many years to catch that up later. None of that's happening right now. Sure, resort areas are booming like crazy because people are flush with cash and people do have money to go out and buy these assets. We are in the longest upward swing that we've ever had in our economy, right? We're Who's to say if we're at the top? I'll, I'll add on to that in just a minute here. But the reality is the market's gone up consistently since 2010. The stock market and the real estate market and the job market and all of these things have gone up and up and up. So a lot of people have done really, really well. They're sitting on a lot of cash. They have a lot of money. They're trying to put it to work. And real estate is one of those things that's very sexy to a lot of people. I keep hearing about overbids like crazy in the Palm Springs area or uh, other desirable uh, resort locations where people want to own that second home, right? So that kind of stuff is happening, but it's real demand. It's real people who are going to really use the property. They're not just buying it, speculating it's going to go up. They actually want to have a place and use it, right? 
Now, so what's fueling all that success and all of that, uh, in my opinion, that's driving the market? There's, there's two really big things. The first one is really obvious. Interest rates went down about a year ago, uh, last fall, and they dropped all the way to zero, the Fed, Federal Reserve, right? Dropped the interest, the borrow rate to 0%. Well, that's what banks get to borrow the money at. So for them, money's super cheap. So they'll give it to you super cheap. That's why mortgage loans are at such a low rate right now, below 3% in many cases on single family residences. So that means your, your money, your $3,000 a month payment or whatever, buys a much bigger house. That used to buy a $500,000 house and now it buys a $700,000 house or whatever. The value of the houses has only gone up because you can buy more with the same, the same mortgage payment, right? So what happened was interest rates dropped, but if you know anything about lending, a bank won't go and just say, well, it used to be 500,000, now people are willing to pay 700,000, so we'll value it at that. They won't. The banks say, well, we need comparable properties. We need other properties that are in the area that have sold for about that much. And if you say, well, they've been selling for 500, we wanna pay 510, they'll let you do that. But if you wanna pay 600, they'll say no, it won't appraise for that. So the next guy could only sell his, even though he would pay 700 for it because his payment would allow him to do that, he'll only pay 510 and the next guy 520 and the next guy 530. And each one of those transactions takes one, two, maybe three months to go through. And so the houses have very quickly been stair-stepping their way up in value, but it takes a long time for lenders to be able to assess and, and value a property based on an appraisal at that height. So we've been seeing that crazy acceleration through this past year of essentially where the value of houses is catching up with the drop in the interest rate. So that's been one thing that's really been fueling it. But once again, it's real buyers. People are buying houses to live in, not just speculating on, I'm gonna buy a house just because it's gonna go up and leave it vacant or, or any of these other things that don't make sense long-term. Right, And obviously the, the second really big thing that's driving our market is we just dropped $5 trillion into our economy through the stimulus packages, right? People got checks and people got unemployment and all these other things. And a lot of those things were des designed to help a lot of people stay afloat. But there are also a lot of people who got that money and really didn't need it. I work with a ton of business owners who got a lot of money and a lot of the money that they got, they didn't need it. Like they were afraid they might, but like I know a guy who's got an auto shop and he basically told me the government made my payroll for me for six months, but our businesses really didn't need it, right? So most of that money still sitting in his, in his bank account. Well, he can go out and buy equipment and do other things, so that's good for our economy, but he can also pay more for real estate. And there's a lot of that going on on the business owner level where a lot of business owners do have a lot of extra cash They've been using it to hire more people. They've been using it to hire people away from the competitors. And so what I've seen is there's not a lot of raises happening within companies to keep up with, with uh, the inflation and some of the cost of living that appears to be happening. But what there is is a lot of people are jumping from one job to the next because the, the competitor has a bunch of money and they're going and offering more to your person and bringing them over to their business, right? And so a lot of job hopping's happening right now. There's been a lot of videos on the great resignation, right? On a lot of people resigning or changing jobs or switching up their life. But a lot of that is just jumping, jumping from one job they didn't love to another job that's gonna be better and pays them more. And so we're also seeing a rise in wages in that regard, especially in skilled labor. Like if you have a, an unskilled job, maybe you're a college student or or a barista or something like that, the skills level is not that high, the barriers to entry, then that may not be happening as much. But for engineers, for computer science people, for a lot of this technology related stuff, like that's happening like crazy. For example, a friend of mine works for a large defense company and he said they were pushing to bring everybody back to work and the day they brought everybody back to work, 50 people quit and most of them were getting offers from other jobs that didn't make them come back to work and for more money. Right, So there's a lot of things happening that way, but the reality is wages are going up and interest rates are low so people can afford more of a house. And that's going to continue to happen. Now the reason I think that we're not in for a drought anytime soon is one, there's pent up buyer demand. There's a lot of buyers who want to buy and there aren't that many houses. Builders are building like crazy all over the country. 
but they haven't caught up yet. And the second thing is interest rates aren't likely to pump, bump back up for at least another year. The Fed has been saying 2023, a lot of analysts think that's probably the case. So I would say we've probably got at least another year, maybe year and a half, uh, probably spring 2023 is what they're projecting. Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows for sure. I don't know for sure. But my guess is they're going to want our economy to be really back on stable ground before they start raising the interest rates back up. Now, once that does happen, I do think we're going to see real estate stall. I think the stock market's going to see some ramifications then, if not before then. But at the end of the day, interest rates are low. People are making more money. There's a bunch of people who have a ton of cash socked away because we're at the top of a really good economy and it's been going really well. And a lot of business owners got a, bu a bunch of benefit from a lot of this stimulus and they're slowly using that money and that's driving up equipment and housing and all the other stuff. So there's a lot of things going on, but at the end of the day, what it means is, in my opinion, we are going to have a robust economy for at least another year, uh, maybe even further into the future until interest rates start to creep back up some of that stimulus money's been spent, people have bought all the stuff they need to buy, and then we might see a little bit of a lag there. So, I know everybody's arguing that we're gonna have a 2008 again. I guarantee you it will not happen like that. Everything that costs 2008 is not happening now. We will see a sag, we will see a pullback, I think, when interest rates tick up. If for no other reason, the same payment buys less house, less car, less piece of equipment, less large capital purchase, but it's gonna happen. Anyway, if you found this valuable, please give me a thumbs up or a like the video. It really helps us a lot with the channel. Be sure to subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, drop a comment down below. Let us know you're new. I will personally welcome you. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you're wondering what you can do in this economy, if you can't afford real estate on how to grow it, check out my video on the comparison between life insurance and real estate. I think you'll be really surprised at how powerful life insurance can be as a similar vehicle that doesn't take a huge down payment. Anyway, I'll see you on the next video.